Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well during these trying times. Uh, today I want to bring up an issue that affects many of us on a day-to-day -day basis in our classrooms, at home, as well as in our everyday lives. So many of us have probably heard the word trauma before. Um, many of us maybe have even experienced trauma in some shape or form, or perhaps you know someone who has experienced a traumatic event before. However, there's a lot about trauma that we don't really know, such as how us as educators who don't really have a whole lot of training help those who are affected by trauma, so mainly our students in our classrooms. So for my TED talk, I want to address a few uncertainties that us as educators maybe are having with dealing with trauma in our classrooms and how to best handle a situation when it arises, because trauma can really happen at any time. So a little bit about my experience in this area. During my time in student teaching, I had a student who transferred into my classroom who actually suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. After she was involved in the car accident, uh, her first few weeks in the classroom, were her symptoms were pretty mild and she expressed a lot of anxiety and fearfulness. And this all affected her learning and how she interacted with both myself and other students. And I didn't really have too much training on it. Now with COVID-19 causing schools to close, this is a little bit more. Many teachers and students alike are struggling to make ends meet in terms of their schoolwork and their jobs and it's becoming a lot more traumatic. This is considered a small T trauma, which I will talk about in a little bit. Um, from this information that I learned, I was conducting interviews from other research projects. And what I found is actually these teachers are dealing with a lot more of stress, depression, they're being removed from their work and the jobs that they enjoy. And it's becoming more of an issue. So my point to doing this project was to investigate trauma and find ways to help students and teachers alike cope with the issues they're having. And I feel that this could be very beneficial to future encounters that school personnel may face when they're working with uh, children in these types of situations. So first, a quick little rundown about trauma. So trauma is the response to a deeply distressing de or disturbing event that overwhelms the individual's ability to cope, causing feelings of helplessness, diminishes their sense of self, and their ability to feel a full range of emotions and experiences. So some common responses to having a traumatic event are things such as uh, experiencing different levels of sadness, anger, fear, and shame. Uh, some individuals have even experienced nausea, dizziness, um, different st uh, sleep patterns, changes in appetite, or even headaches. Um, this course has the effect on also a student's ability to learn, and it creates an environment where students get distracted by intrusive thoughts about the event that might have taken place, and that it prevents them from paying attention in class or studying or doing well on a test, and it affects their daily routine inside the classroom. So trauma can be expressed in a wide range of forms. So we, as I just discussed in my experiences, post-traumatic stress disorder, that's a mental health condition that can be triggered by a terrifying events such as a car crash as I specified before. Um, other examples could be a shooting, domestic violence, and interestingly enough everyone's experiences with PTSD differ and how long flashbacks or symptoms can last vary amongst the individual. Um, another form of trauma would be acute stress disorder. This is another similar health condition that shares many of the same symptoms but usually lasts about a few weeks. Uh, another form of chronic trauma, this refers to repeated exposure to assaults on the mind or body. So this could be something such as a sexual assault, uh, consistent domestic violence at home, um, and also complex trauma, which refers to exposure to chronic trauma. So this is generally by the individual's primary caregivers or the impact of such exposure over time. So some statistics about trauma, these are pretty shocking in my eyes. So since trauma can stem from so many different areas, such as abuse or loss or accidents, on average, about 70% of adults have experienced trauma in some way. And that comes from nearly all the children who have witnessed this type of trauma in some way, all developing PTSD. Um, another, some more statistics, 90% um, of sexual abuse children, 70% of children exposed to school shootings, and 35% of urban youth that are exposed to community violence also develop PTSD in their lifetime. Uh, it's also been shown that 60% of youth aged 17 or younger have been exposed to crime, violence, or abuse directly or indirectly at some point in their life. And in a study done 
about 536 elementary and middle school children that were surveyed within an inner city community, 30% of those children had witnessed a stabbing and another 26% had also witnessed shootings in their life. And this was done in 2012. So teachers respond to trauma almost every day in their classrooms. We're first to see them every day when they come in and we spend most of the day with them. Yet schools historically have placed mental health concerns in the hands of school counselors or school workers for the students without providing countermeasure resources for the teachers. So this general tendency neglects to recognize that teachers are often the first outside of the family members to learn about the students' trauma and feel its effects firsthand. And recently, and this is something, this will also ties into my experiences, there wasn't really too much preparation for teacher education programs about how to deal with these traumas for the students. And that's becoming an issue more and more for teachers as they come into the field. So with all of this, where does this lead us now? Well, as educators, there actually is a number of ways we can help our students within the classroom setting. And since every child is different, every situation can be taken in a different way. So one easy way that we can help our students is actually to reassure the children that they are safe. A lot of these children are coming from very hard backgrounds and it's one way that we can help them is just reassuring them that they're in a safe spot there. They don't have to worry about these types of issues. No harm is going to come to them in the classroom. Um, and it's important to know that so they feel safe. Uh, another way is to avoid loud noises, such as slamming the doors, raising your voice. Uh, depending on what the student may have gone through, this can actually trigger some of the students to experience their trauma and have those flashbacks. So finding ways to minimize those noises is another great way. Um, Teachers also consider, we need to consider not adding extra stresses into their daily lives. So things such as overloading them with homework or other difficult tasks may add stress that they are already dealing with. So students that are subjugated to those prolonged or severe unpredictable stress, um, they can actually be led to hyperarousal or hypoarousal and might be put into that fight, flight, or freeze mode, causing them to have higher order functions to absolutely be lost. So those are just a couple ways. And for my students with disabilities, this is one that I've also worked with a little bit. And I think this also really helps. Uh, mindful minutes. These are another great technique that you can use to assist your students, but it can be used with the entire class as well. So this allows students to train their minds to observe thoughts and feelings without judgment or criticism, since it can be hard to talk about. And in a research study done in 2016, a study looked at the effects of daily mindful minutes within the classroom. And ultimately, they found that it increased positive automatic thoughts to a greater extent than cognitive reappraisal. So this is just another way you can add it in. Um, this is, of course, just a brief introduction to dealing with stress in the classroom. There's many more that can be applied for those who are in the counseling fields or um, other medical professionals. But for us as regular educators, these are just a handful of different ways. And the research goes on and on. But my hope is that with this understanding we can help these students when they're coming into the classroom with some sort of event that went on in their life. So thank you for joining me today and I hope you all have a wonderful day.